रावण पंछी लाडला तुम रुधर के है श्याण पंछी लाडला तुम रुधर के है श्याण मरुधर के है श्याम मरुधर के है शान सा गोडावण धरती का अभिमान राजस्थान द मोस्ट कलरफुल एंड एक्सोटिक स्टेट ऑफ इंडिया नॉट ओनली इन चांस ट्रेवलर्स टू इंडिया with its architectural wonders but this land is also uniquely renowned for its ecological equity on one side there are these vast lakes full of clean water or these mountain ranges clothed with green forests on the other side there are these undulating sand dunes of thar desert dotted with an intricate mosaic of xerophytic vegetation Thar desert with a population density of 85 people per square kilometer is the most densely populated desert in the world Domestic animals are a natural boon here and the most amazing facet is the wildlife surviving all around human settlements as the compassion for living beings is essence of living ethos here Here in the Thar desert one can easily spot a variety of rare and some of the most endangered species of birds and a variety of mammals in tiny groups or individuals moving all around but the most important and the biggest attraction here is the great indian bustard locally known as godavan godavan one of the heaviest flying birds in the world and the heaviest flying bird in indian subcontinent was declared as the state bird of rajasthan in 1982 When the Tourism and Wildlife Society of India organized the first Indian conference on international bustard conservation held in Jaipur in 1980, participants from all over the bustard world expressed concern about how bustards were suffering from the twin impacts of habitat loss and hunting. There was great optimism then, but it has to be said that the results after nearly 40 years since that meeting have been pretty disappointing. All four species found in India are still declining and one the magnificent great Indian bustard has reached the point of disappearing altogether yet it's not too late to save the state bird of Rajasthan from becoming a dim memory it would indeed be tragic if in 2020 we were to hold an anniversary conference with the title bustards how they became extinct Great Indian bustard inhabits the grasslands which are considered as wastelands. It helps in maintaining the ecosystem of these grasslands. But the fast growing urbanization of rural areas in the name of development is not only shrinking these arid open habitats but is also badly impacting the economy 
of the local communities. It is these very grasslands which support their livestock by providing them with grazing fields. About 15 to 20 percent of the livestock population of the world resides in India. Thus, a large chunk of human population of our country is directly dependent on these dwindling grasslands of India. In 1970s, when the species was first listed as endangered, the great Indian bustard used to be found in most parts of the Indian subcontinent. In India, the species could easily be sighted in the reserves of Karera and Ghati Gaon in Madhya Pradesh, Lala in Gujarat, Nanaj in Maharashtra, Rola Padu in Andhra Pradesh and Ram Devra, Sorsan and Sonkhalia areas in Rajasthan. The Thar Desert always remained its stronghold and the birds survived well along with people and livestock. Over the past 30 years, the number of this bird has declined alarmingly due to habitat loss and degradation, hunting and direct disturbance and moreover due to lack of appropriate management and adequate protection. It has almost disappeared from its former home range in the states of Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh and Andhra Pradesh. That is why the International Union for Conservation of Nature and BirdLife International uplisted the status of Great Indian Bustard to Critically Endangered Category. It is listed in Schedule 1 of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act. India hosts about 12% of the world's avifauna. fauna. Of all the birds seen in India, 61 species are endemic. The great Indian bustard too is endemic to the Indian subcontinent. The bustards belong to an ancient avian family called Otididae. There are 26 species of bustards found in the world. At one time, six species of bustards were seen in the Indian subcontinent, namely Great Bustard, Little Bustard, Great Indian Bustard, Hobra, Lesser Florican, and Bengal florican. Today, India hosts only three species of resident bustards. Lesser florican, Bengal florican and the great Indian bustard. Great Indian Bustards congregate in traditional grassland patches to breed during midsummer and monsoon. Outside of breeding season, it probably makes local and possibly long-distant nomadic movements. Great Indian Bustard is omnivorous and its main diet consists 
of grasshoppers, locusts and other insects. It also eats lizards, scorpion and snakes. They also relish berries and similar small fruits. They can live without water for days, but where water is available, they will drink almost daily. It requires different microhabitat envelopes for different activities. Grasslands having tall vegetation with dense cover and high insect resources for nesting. Short sparse vegetation on slightly elevated ground for display. Sparse vegetation with minimal scrub for roosting and moderate vegetation shade for resting. That is why the dry grasslands of Jaisalmer are today the most sought after shelter and viable breeding grounds of the great Indian bustard. In 1980, an area of 3,162 square kilometers of Thar Desert, spreading in the districts of Jaisalmer and Barmer, was notified as Desert National Park, with an objective of conservation of this unique and pride possession of India. The Great Indian Bustard and its co-inhabitants in these arid and sandy lands. Today, a large number of rare species of wildlife like desert fox, Indian fox and reptiles like desert monitor, sand lizards and a variety of snakes besides the Indian gazelle or chinkara can also be seen moving around in the golden sand dunes. Desert National Park also hosts a number of birds of prey including steppe eagle, red-headed vulture and lager falcon. Great Indian Bustard with its population ranging from 35 to 40 is mainly concentrated in this Sudashuri landscape area of Desert National Park. Their upper parts are cryptically colored which enables them to camouflage over the ground and save themselves from predators flying above the ground. Sexual dimorphism through color variation and difference in size is very evident in the great Indian bustard. Full grown male standing up to 1.1 meters can weigh up to 18 kilograms. The female is smaller at 0.9 to 0.92 meters. The female has slender neck and a bit shorter. The male has a thicker neck which is longer. Males also have a gula pouch like thing hanging on front side of the neck. Its wings are black, brown and grey in colour. The male has more dark upper feathers. The female has bit lighter color feathers. Every bird has a black crown on top of its head, while rest of the head and neck are whitish. The black crown is dense, 
a little larger but somewhat crested and little puffed up among males and very thin among the females. This black patch is one of the most prominent objects to identify a male from a female. The bird, whether standing, walking or going at a brisk pace, keeps its neck straight and beak upwards, rotating the neck more than 100 degrees to observe any movement or occurrence as far as a few hundred meters away. The great Indian bustard generally walks around throughout the day and flies off only when compelled to bolt away. The great Indian bustard very well understands its surroundings and its co-inhabitants. It will remain stationary, patient and even unperturbed if an Indian gazelle or a camel may come very close to it. Or even a villager dressed in traditional rural attire happens to pass by its territory because it can identify them as its co-inhabitants. Contrary to this, the bird gets extremely conscious if it spots a person unknown to its natural living and surroundings entering its habitat. It will become very alert and will start behaving in a very different manner. If the intruder tries to chase the bird, the great Indian bustard will take to wings and fly away. Even after landing in a far-off grassland habitat, the bird will remain alert. Great Indian Bustard defends itself from aerial predators like falcon or eagle or buzzard by spreading its large wings and bobs its neck up and down to threaten the aggressor. Great Indian Bustard is a polygynous species. A male couples with couple of females. Bustards are well known for their outstanding courtship performances performed by a male lasting several days. The male usually selects an elevated or a flat place with very less grass to pronounce display. The male announces its desire for mating by inflating its gula pouch and cocks up its tail to signal here I am and available. Its booming call, which can be heard up to one kilometer distance, serves as a communication signal for the females which may be around. It is the female that makes the initiative. The 
mating occurs during the peak display session. Once the courtship and mating are over, the male has no responsibility towards its progeny. It is the job of the mother to take care of the egg, hatching and nursing the chick. The great Indian bustard does not make any nest. It lays egg on bare ground. Clutch size in great Indian bustard is only one egg. The incubation period is three to four weeks. The female leaves the egg only for foraging. It prefers to forage during morning and afternoon to utilize the comparative cooler sessions of the day. Within 24 hours of hatching, the chick comes out and is observed walking around its mother, which continues for almost a year. The mother takes it into nearby areas to let it soon develop most essential nuances of survival, including picking up fee and learning strategy of saving itself from predators like wolf, fox, eagles, crows and other flying predators. It usually breeds between March and September differing regionally based on rainfall. During their breeding period they do need some secluded area where there is least disturbance of humans and cattle, especially the cattle, as there is always a danger of inadvertent trampling of the nest and eggs by a grazing herd. The great Indian bustard would earlier be seen in droves of 30 to 40 birds. But nowadays it is found just as a single entity or in twos, occasionally in a tiny group of 4 to 5 birds during breeding season. According to the studies done by the Wildlife Institute of India, as well as according to me, uh, there are probably not more than 150 to 200 busters left in the whole world. Uh, even if there are 250 busters, still the population is very low. And, and in many areas, uh, uh, the bustard population, of one bustard or two busters are surviving here and there. Like in Sholapur, sometimes one bustard is seen. Uh, in um, Barora area of Maharashtra, two, or two busters are sometimes seen. They are ecologically dead because two you can't revive the population from two busters. Uh, sometimes in Rola Padu, one or two busters, female busters are seen. So they are ecologically dead. The only viable population uh, left is in Nalia, in Gujarat, uh, in Abdasa Taluka, as well as in Rajasthan. The decline in its population is so grave that from being more than 1,000 individuals, only a few decades back, the population of Great Indian Bustard has shrunk to 745 in the year 1978, 600 in 2001, 300 in 2008, and in 2017, it is reported to be about 125 only. The basic reasons for the rapid decline of Great Indian Bustard have been the widespread hunting for sport and food. Another irony with Great Indian Bustard is that whatever population is being recruited in Desert National Park or Wildlife 
century as you may like to call it. A good percentage of this is flying across the country into the nearby areas in Pakistan. I believe those birds seldom come back to India. The anthropogenic and related biotic disturbances and moreover the habitat loss due to conversion of grasslands to other purposes are the other main factors that cause the rapid decline in its population. The decline was further accelerated by the expansion of roads, enabling vehicular access to remote areas and the destruction of its habitat as vast stretches of grasslands have been brought under cultivation since the arrival of the Indira Gandhi Canal bringing drinking water to these far-flung border areas which passes through the Desert National Park. The people of the desert, they used to live a very simple life earlier. When the first rains come, they used to sow some bajra and whatever they get, they used to, they were, that was sufficient for them to eat. But gradually what happened is the population increased. They used to use animals for plowing, now that has been replaced with tractors. New crops came, uh, economic crops like guar. They started plowing, uh, cultivating more land. This is with respect to the entire desert, not just desert national park alone. So the grasslands which are typical of this desert area, the seven grasslands, that has disappeared. Now it's almost gone from the areas outside desert national park, whatever little uh, is left in the village gochar lands and some of the orans. So this has resulted in a gradual reduction in the population of Great Indian Bustard. Activities such as mining, stone querying and encroachment in and around bustard sanctuaries has been another major problem. Growth of industries and power projects along with electricity pylons, wind turbines, solar energy projects and other infrastructures have increased the severity of habitat degradation and disturbance. Great Indian Bustard faces another piquant problem. Being a large-bodied species, it cannot be conserved through the usual practices of declaring protected areas alone. The protected areas have their own limitations. The bird usually flies out of such protected areas. Besides, by closing grasslands as protected land has caused local hostility towards the bird. Bustard at present lives in the large landscape with people. So we can't wish away the people. And most of the time or 80% of the time, 80% of busters live in agriculture fields and grazing lands. So we have to involve people for conservation of bustard. But unfortunately, the, the system is that uh, in the, uh, if we establish a sanctuary, then we have, to, we have to follow those rules and regulations, uh, which sometimes, not sometimes, but most of the time antagonizes the local communities. In most of the places where I have done the studies and we, and we know the local communities, they, were, uh, they had a benign attitude. Is there? That is a simple answer. So it lives in this area. They will not harm it, particularly the local communities, and they are not going to go out of way to protect it also. It is a benign attitude, it is a good attitude, and Bustard was surviving. But now if we antagonize those people by the, the, the rules and regulations of the Wildlife Protection Act, then they have got a negative feeling of the Bustard. And that is the res the, this has resulted in, in Karera Bustard Sanctuary, where the Bustard disappeared, uh, and Sorsan Bustard area in Rajasthan, where the Bustard disappeared, and it has happened in Sholapur uh, Bustard area, where they, I have counted 27 Bustards 
uh, in Sholapi Nanaj area, now there is no one, uh, no bustard left in that area or sometimes one bird is seen. And, and these are the same villagers which had a very good positive attitude or a benign attitude. Now they are all antagonistic to the bustard conservation. Outside the protected areas, there is widespread infrastructural development. Birds collision with power lines is becoming frequent. Tourism has become more intensive a business. Night light shows and blaring loud music are today a common feature at some sand dunes. Jaisalmer has very high tourism value. Sand dunes is something which every tourist visiting Jaisalmer wants to visit. And uh, unluckily for us, the best sand dune in Jaisalmer district, close to the Jaisalmer city, is where the bustards are breeding. As, as high as 40, 40 big camping sites developed in some sand dunes, they all play music, they celebrate New Year crack crackers and their food waste invite a lot of predators, egg predators of bustard like crows and uh, dogs. So this threat has to be avoided. The all the camps in some should properly dispose their food waste so that at least it is it should not promote crows and uh, dog population. The expansion of windmills is yet another cantankerous issue. The blades and their impact are causing a new hazard to the flights of these large birds. Problems appear to be too many for the bird. Yet, despite all these problems, the lone hope is the Desert National Park, which even today is its preferred breeding ground and where a population of 100 to 125 birds still survives. Keeping in view the vast decline of Great Indian Bustard population, quite a few targeted conservation actions are being taken by various government agencies. Rajasthan being the custodian of the largest population of bustards across the world, is now operating an ambitious conservation program, namely Project Great Indian Bustard. Under this project, quite a few effective steps are being taken to conserve this landscape. Saving the bird and its habitat will also help in saving its co-inhabitants, the other large variety of rare species of wildlife of these dry arid lands. As far as habitat is concerned, uh, is, 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 at present is not the only issue, hmm. uh, but uh, the major issue is that we should have a, uh, a conservation breeding program. Uh, where we can supplement the uh, existing population by con uh, conservation breeding. It is a long term pro program, it cannot be done in a few years time. So, at least it is at, at least 20-25 years of program. It should have been started nearly 20 years ago, but we are, uh, although we are very late, it is still time to do it. And uh, Rajasthan government is willing to do a conservation breeding program by taking out the eggs and hatching them and then it will take five years to five or six years for them to grow and the first developing a stock and then breed, breeding that stock and then re releasing the um, F2, F3 generation birds. We do have dialogue with uh, some international experts, uh, those who have already done uh, captive breeding of uh, some bustards. For example, uh, in Abu Dhabi, they, we do have re reports of uh, uh, successful uh, 
and breeding of ubara buster so we are inviting experts from those areas and we are seeking their expertise for the setting of conservation breeding center that is captive breeding center in some part of rajasthan that the dialogue is going on and uh, definitely we do have collaboration with the wildlife institute of india and ministry of environment and forest so that's our long term uh, vision for the protection of this species it does not mean that we should neglect the wild population the wild population uh, habitat as well as the wild population should should be protected and we should see that the wild population also increases uh, so conservation breeding is a supplement to the wild population and sort of a emergency uh, holding of some birds in emergency if the wild population disappears then at least we will be able to uh, have the species in captivity for future release purpose and i hope that day will not come that wild population is gone only we have got the uh, captive population but we should do both the things together a new process has thus been set into motion some notable habitat revamp exercises have been put in place within the desert national park by the forest department of rajasthan we have already made certain closures in desert national park for the protection of this species we can't protect this bird from going from one place to another but certainly we can protect its breeding ground by making the closure in those areas so what's happening because of um, too much pressure from villagers in terms of grazing so people used to visit along with their cattle and uh, because of disturbance of human being so it generally abandon its nests and go away when it goes away these eggs will be predated upon by these predators that's why we keep on talking about uh, protection of its breeding habitat in the name of closures wire fencing has been modified to totally prevent the entry of stray dogs thus giving priority to the safety of the mother and the baby at chick stages the grass clumps shrubs bushes and reed like vegetation are being allowed to assume natural shapes for further safeguarding them from natural predators some new and inviolate closures have been set apart new sources of water have been created at several places the volume and behavior of traffic on the road bisecting the desert national park has been tapped punctuated and being regulated at nalia bustard sanctuary in kutch gujarat the state forest department has taken control and protected a vast landscape around the park by fencing it and taking other safety measures which has shown positive results today nalia is the second largest population of the great indian bustard locally known as ghorad in gujarat this year to, uh, 2016 and 17 the population estimation of uh, great indian bustard is going on and in november because we are getting the figures of every month in november Uh, our enumerators found 25 birds which include three chicks also this is a very heartening sight that this area uh, the bustard population is breeding in in our sanctuary and surrounding areas in maharashtra keeping in with the initiatives taken for the preservation and protection of great indian bustard locally known as maldhok the use of satellite telemetry was proposed and executed to know more about the so far unknown nomadic movements of the bird while it goes away from its known habitat thus in 2015 
a team of biologists from the Wildlife Institute of India, led by Dr. Bilal Habib, in collaboration with the Maharashtra State Forest Department, fitted a solar-powered platform terminal transmitter on the back of the Great Indian Bustard, which was captured at Nanaj Bustard Sanctuary and released a little later. The data thus received from these transmitters has been very encouraging and useful in understanding the lifestyle of the bird. Scientists are sure that the data will help in preparing the roadmap for the preservation and protection of the bird. Our own scientists, our own forest officers have tagged Great Indian Bustard probably twice in Maharashtra. I wonder why it has not been at other places, Gujarat, Rajasthan and way back 10 years ago this should have been done in all the Bustard states. Satellite transmitter technology provides you the most appropriate, most up-to-date present tense form of where, what to do, where is the bird and it lead you to a very far-reaching conservation results. Besides the various state forest departments and other government agencies, quite a few other organizations and individuals are also fairly contributing in the protection and preservation of the great Indian bustard and their habitat through regular awareness campaigns and other related activities. Foundation is working in collaboration with the Gujarat State Forest Department. We have identified potential habitat outside the protected area and we are trying to develop contiguous patch of habitat, be it the lacking ground or breeding ground or foraging ground of the species. If the bustard will have habitat, a suitable habitat, then only they will survive. To do so, we have removed the invasive species like Prosopis from the important bustard habitat and we have restored the area. In addition to this, as the feral or the stray dogs are one of the serious threat and to control the population of the feral and stray dogs, the Corbett Foundation and Forest Department has jointly done um, an animal birth control program through which we have sterilized more than 450 uh, stray dogs uh, from the core area of the Great Indian Bustard. Due to all these uh, various efforts. Now the great Indian busters are returning to such restored plots. Uh, they have uh, identified the new restored habitat as a suitable uh, ground. They have started breeding on such grounds and few activities with the farmers have been carried out where the farmers are being taught to uh, cultivate the traditional crops which are, uh, which are good for the bustard. Uh, and we are promoting the biopesticides in the area as the pesticide is one of the serious threat to the uh, mustard. Since 2010, the Corbett Foundation is running Save GIB campaign. In this campaign, we are approaching villages which are falling under the GIB's distribution range. There are almost 47 schools where, which we are targeting on. And uh, we educate students show, by showing them the slideshow uh, and PowerPoint presentations. We show them documentaries and uh, which is followed by different fun filled activities like quiz competition, poster making competition, etc. So the objective behind this whole campaign is to make the local populace and the young generation aware about this species, its threats and the current status. But the fact remains that besides the various government and non-government agencies, the local residents as well as the visitors also need to contribute in the preservation measures. Most importantly, 
the local villagers need to be persuaded to protect the habitat so that this bird can be conserved. Our experience of working with people is that the older people are difficult to change, they are difficult to be convinced. So our education programs are more focused towards educating the younger generation who are going to be the citizens of tomorrow. Uh, we celebrate auspicious wildlife days and we run regular education and awareness programs in these villages. Uh, we partner with uh, BNHS and WWF, the major NGOs of the country and uh, carry out these education programs in the schools and villages. Uh, we use our uh, film shows, people uh, are invited for giving educational lectures, talks, slide shows and all this put together will effectively uh, create a new generation who are more conscious about conservation as well as the benefits of uh, keeping their wilderness uh, intact so that the benefits coming out of it in, in the way of tourism they can uh, avail those benefits. Thus, Rajasthan Forest Department has been working hard to protect and preserve their habitat and making them feel safe and comfortable in these arid grasslands of Jaisalmer and around. Their triumph has started showing results. Many of the habitats of GIB have been uh, protected in the name of closures, not only in Desert National Park but also in, around Desert National Park that is in Ramdevra area. So we do have some encouraging results and uh, we have reports of uh, successful hatching of chicks in these areas. So these are signs. But uh, we should not stop here only, our efforts should go further. Great Indian Bustard's new home range and breeding territories constitute an arc of largely unprotected land. From the northern trip of the Desert National Park to the southwest of Jaisalmer district up to the town of Ramdevra, that is why Godavan is today seen in the other surrounding areas as well like in these grasslands near Ramdevra. Apart from the desert national park and the adjoining areas, there is a major population of bustard living in the uh, field firing range of army, which is, this is near Pokhran. Oh, that area is very uh, highly protected. Army car uh, car uh, carries out their weapon testing and uh, firing in that area. But the shells fall in a small portion of the field firing range, rest of the area is having a very good uh, desert ecosystem and bustard is surviving in very good numbers there. Considering its potential to support bird population, we have a satellite range established in Pokhran uh, and Ramdevra. There inside the closures, the bustards are breeding every year. Truly, these sandy lands of Rajasthan are today the most sought after and only breeding grounds of the great Indian bustard world over. This is just a beginning. Destination is still far away. Godavan is not only to be protected but also to be preserved. Government and other non-government agencies are well contributing to the mission. Now it is our turn to play our part to ensure that the great Indian bustard is not only protected but also well preserved so that our coming generations could also have the feel and pleasure of watching the grandeur of its amazing walk. <laughs> अब केवल दिखता है 
अपने भारत देश इसे बचाना ही होगा यही है उद्देश गोडावन धरती का लाडला तुमर धर की है